Welcome to the FI360 Toolkit webinar. The following scenario will show how certain tasks can be completed using the toolkit and will give step-by-step -step directions which are intended to get users familiar with the various features of the toolkit. In this scenario, we'll be building a recommended fund list for clients by analyzing mutual funds and ETFs based upon quantitative due diligence criteria. In the first section, we'll be using the analyzer, which is the magnifying glass here, or you can access it under individual tools and analyzer, and also the recommended fund list area, which is under my list and recommended fund list. On the later portion, we'll go through how to build custom due diligence criteria and apply that while you're looking for funds so you can stay consistent with your process. And that's under settings, user settings, and due diligence criteria. So the first step is to build an approved fund list for use throughout the toolkit. We can access recommended fund list by going to my list and then recommended fund list. We can create a new list. You'll see we already have some examples here, but we'll create a new list. Example 4000. And we'll hit the green create button. So once we create that, it'll be populated in our table. We could edit it right now if we want. There's zero funds, so there's really no use in editing it right now. But you can click on edit to see what's in there. But what we'll do is we'll go into the analyzer to actually put some funds into this recommended fund list. So go to the top nav bar under individual tools and analyzer. When you click on that, it'll take you to the conduct research page. So we're going to be looking for best in class funds. We can apply different search factors and thresholds. Um, if you just want to put on some tickers that you have already, you're more than welcome to do that just by typing in those tickers or QSIPs. So if we want to add that funder and view the results and add it to the list, we can do that. If we want to search by fund name, for example, if we're looking for Vanguard long term, but we're not sure exactly what it is, we can bring over Vanguard long term. It'll search within the fund name. There's 16 that have that in there. So we could view our results and find the funds. But again, we're looking for best in class. So we want to select peer groups. Now, if we want to look for top performers in mid cap blend, for example, we can click inside this box and type in MID. So beginning of mid cap, it'll be highlighted and you can hit the gray arrow button over. So that brings it down to about 400 results. There's 407 to be exact. And we can start adding over other factors and thresholds. Before we do that, just want to review what all of these are on the left hand side. So you can have over fund names, fiduciary scores, which takes into account criteria on a consistent basis. And we provide a score from zero to 100 and it's a color-coded score, which you'll see in the results page. And if you want to learn more about that, feel free to go to the Help Center, take a look at our brochure, our detailed methodology. It goes into a good explanation about what this score actually is and how it's important to you. So we have the fiduciary scores there. Performance, we can have three-month through 10-year and calendar year returns. Risk, expenses, operations, share classes, all of that will be available for research. Now, the last three sections will show you broker availability. This will limit the options based on a brokerage platform. Custom fund universes are outside the scope of this, but it's a list of funds that you upload into the toolkit via Excel. It's also located under my list. And then obviously the recommended fund list area is where our fund list will be populated. So we have our example 4,000, but we don't want to select it right now. It's just in that list. It has no funds in there. So let's start whittling down these 407 results. What we'll do is we'll add the fiduciary score over. You can add whichever ones that you want, up to 15 of these. So if we want to have a score of less than or equal to 25, and we'll do three-year average less than or equal to 25 as well, we have 57 here. And we'll also bring over three year return, top 20th percentile of the peer group. So these are some pretty high standards. There are 12 funds that are left over. Um, if you adjust these, for example, if we want less than or equal to 10, it'll go down to eight. So we'll keep it a little bit loose for now. If you want to add over again, things like share class or operations, exceptions, risk, anything of that, expenses, you name it, uh, and it's on the left hand side, bring it over, it'll reduce that list even further. So. Once these are all set, you can then view the results. It's a green results page. Um, before we do that, just want to note some things on the right-hand side. So you can change universes. 
you can change the time period you're researching for and what's going to come into play later on is retrieving due diligence criteria and safe searches so if we want to create a new search and pull this over at a later date then we can create a new search by clicking on this function maybe we do mid cap blend um, top in class if we do that we can create it and it will save that search so we can go back in here and retrieve a save search. It's a function on the right hand side here. So before we review our results, I just want to show you how this function will work. So if we just clear all this out and we retrieve one of our save searches, MCB top in class, we load that up, you'll see the page will refresh and there's our criteria again. So if you're going to be doing this research frequently, then maybe you want to consider creating a save search, which is on the right and retrieving save search. So we have our 12 results, we want to view those, and you'll see that we have a list of the funds that meet that criteria. So if we're interested in learning more about these, all we have to do is highlight on the left-hand side. We'll do Fidelity, T. Rowe, and Vanguard, and we'll view reports on the right-hand side. So again, just to, to clarify, click the funds on the left, view available reports on the right. We can run some basic reports in order to get a better feel for these funds. So if we want to run a snapshot report, we can do that and it will show scores, expenses and returns. We can also add different columns. So if we hide a few columns here, we can add other things. So maybe we're looking for a uh, five year fiduciary score. We want to take a peek at that if the funds have the score itself. Maybe we want to look at inception date or investment assets. All of this will be customizable on here. It won't have an effect on the report, but it will be customizable here. So you can take a peek at funds before you run those reports. So we go into our report queue, click on that, click on the red PDF. It'll open up our snapshot report and we'll scroll right down to the main section we're going to be taking a look at. We'll zoom in at 150 and you'll see here that we have the Fidelity, Vanguard, and T row that we selected, the current score, as well as the one through 10 year averages, our expense ratio with uh, percentile rank and then our three month through 10 year returns with relative benchmarks below that. So maybe we find, okay, the uh, Vanguard strategic equity has a good current score, has solid uh, overall scores as well. We're going to put that on a recommended fund list. Uh, we also want to put the T row. We're going to throw in the fidelity as well. We can add any of these. They've passed criteria. We know that they're okay. What we'll do is we'll minimize our report queue. These are already checked off and selected. We'll find that example 4,000 recommended fund list and we'll add that to the recommended fund list. So we click on add, okay, and those will be taken care of for us. If we wanna add more reports into our report queue to do some more research, again, all you have to do is click on the snapshot report and that's a good error there to take a look at. You need to make sure you either have selected investments or you can run them on all investments. So if we want to take a deeper look at, for example, the Vanguard one and we want to run our investment profile, it'll work now because we actually selected it. So once you've added them to the recommended fund list, you'll be able to view that information under my list. And you can also, while this report queue is churning and generating that report for you, if you want to take a look at that recommended fund list, all you have to do is go to my list, recommended fund list, and we can pop into this example 4000. So when we click on edit, it'll take us into our recommended fund list section. You'll probably wanna click on this section here, click to order, and you'll see your mid cap blend funds. So it'll have priority ranking. You can change all of that on the right hand side if you want. You can sort by fiduciary score or other metrics. You can sort by descending or ascending. And then you can even hop back into the analyzer to look for more funds to add to this recommended fund list, or you can add them on the right hand side here. So the main point of this was just to show how to create recommended fund lists and use the criteria in the analyzer to build out those lists. Now, for those of you that have looked at our other videos, you may know about custom due diligence criteria and how you can apply that. So what we'll do is we'll build out a simple set of criteria under the user settings area, go under due diligence criteria, and 
we'll use this criteria in the analyzer and we'll use it on a consistent basis. So this is not only for finding funds, but also for monitoring funds. And I encourage you to look at the other videos that we have relating to monitoring funds and looking at investments and building out plan expectations by using custom criteria. Up on the right hand side, we can create new criteria. Maybe you want to say that we're going to use this time the fiduciary score or less than or equal to 25. We'll look at one year return, needs to be in top 50th percentile of the peer group. And we will put an example here. We'll do example 5050 here. And then we'll save and exit. So in this case, if we go back to the analyzer under individual tools and analyzer, on the right hand side, this is different than retrieving a saved search. We created due diligence criteria in that settings area. It was pretty straightforward. So example 5050 here, we'll load that up and you'll see those two criteria that we needed to have are going to populate here. So if we want to go back and go to the mid cap blend peer group and add that over, we have 70 results that meet this due diligence criteria. If we want to add over large value growth and blend, hold the shift key select multiple ones at once, bring them over, we have 868 results. So this is just to get into the portfolio. This is what our implementation criteria is. We could even raise this higher and go above and beyond if we want. We can add things like sharp. We can add other things like expense ratio, inception date. All of this will help you make a more manageable list uh, overall. So again, due diligence criteria may also help if you're using this in the other sections of the toolkit. Retrieving safe searches will also help. It will allow you to replicate this on a frequent basis. And lastly, if you're interested in using recommended fund lists, you may want to use it within the proposal generator as well, which is um, not going to be included within this video. We're just going to focus on analyzer and recommended fund list section and applying criteria. But uh, this is going to help manage your list within the toolkit and you'll make sure that you are looking for best in class on a consistent basis and using the same criteria all the time. Your clients will know exactly what to expect. So lastly, just to round it out, we're going to quickly review that investment profile report so I don't leave you hanging in that regard. What we'll see here is that Vanguard Fund, we ran a more detailed report on it. We have our scores in the top left. We have our 11 criteria, the fiduciary score criteria, which it passes all of additional data points, and then also some trending fiduciary score information as well. Peer group manager tenure, net assets down, composition are included here, and then also trailing information on net expense ratio, one, three, five year total return, and three year alpha and sharp. So this is a much more detailed report that you can use for investigating funds that may land on your recommended fund list. Again, if you want to access all of this and you want to go into the analyzer, use this magnifying glass, individual tools and analyzer. If you want to go into the recommended fund list, go to my list and recommended fund list. And if you want to build out that custom criteria, settings, user settings, and due diligence criteria will help out with that. If you're interested in learning more about the toolkit, feel free to hop into our help center. We have fiduciary score brochure information, detailed methodology, tutorials, live webinars, as well as archived webinars. And you can always reach out to us and email us at tools at fi360.com. So that's it for the video. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, we're here to help out.